Hey everyone, welcome to part two in this multiple part series where we explore the user interface. Welcome back. In part one we explored the amazing world of GDevelop and what it can do. Now it's time to dive into the software itself and get familiar with the user interface. Think of it as your game development command center. We're going to be doing this video a little bit differently and uh, just for testing purposes, you'll figure it out. Let's go. All right, now we transferred over to the main starting area. So as you may have noticed, um, I'm already logged in, but you can get logged in here. Um, you will be greeted by a, a generic welcome window with your name in it once you get signed in. And then you have a kind of a, a boot camp area for you to get started watching some of the basic videos and doing a couple of tutorials that will help get you uh, more hands-on experience. Now, if you didn't find these very, uh, very helpful um, or they didn't teach you exactly what you wanted to know, um, uh, you should still do these because there is a there's concepts taught behind them and you get familiar with the user interface. Now, of course, you're watching my videos to kind of skip through that process, but I still think that no matter what, these mechanics that you should know how to do. Now, um, I haven't done them myself because I, I've been around for a couple of years in GDevelop. Um, and uh, throughout my time, I'm sure that I've covered, I've reviewed the content and uh, and done it, but I don't think I actually ever used their, 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 their newest uh, boot up sort of. Uh, tutorial. Now, there's a lot of other uh, options here, but we, I, I want to encourage you to to investigate and explore this on your own. The thing that we're going to focus on today in the part two video is the build section, and this is where all the magic happens. This is where you you want to get into probably. So here we have some ready-made templates that we can choose from. Some of them are premium that we can purchase, other ones, and most of them are actually completely free. And then um, there's other ways to import templates. Say you get something off of itch. Uh, we'll cover imports in another uh, very short video, maybe one of my, my YouTube shorts. But um, what we're going to do is go to our build menu, and then we're going to go to the create a project because we're going to do a cloud project. Now, you need to be signed into the cloud to be able to do this. You could you can change it here in the where to store this project is either the GDevelop cloud or your computer. You can name it whatever you want. Um, and in this case, we're going to choose the desktop and mobile landscape uh, 720 and not the full 1080. And the reason is because this is just general compatibility be between phones and web browser as well as general PC usage. So we're going to stick with that. And we're going to turn off the allow players to authenticate in game. This is a one-click solution. We can add this back at any time, but I don't want to. I don't want to add any features into the basic format of how to make it. So we can click this button and randomly generate our our name for our project, unless you know what you're going to call it. But for now, we're just going to leave it as is. Um, hit generation a few times and and leave it. We're going to optimize it for pixel art because that's what we're going to be doing. And otherwise, we could use an AI prompt to generate some pre-made assets from the free available ones on the store. But I think that uh, for this case, it's really important that it, before you do anything like this, that um, you learn the basics. So although these are great features and you can check them out at any time, we're going to skip over them. We're going to go into create a project. Okay, so here we are in the game scene editor. And I want to make this video pretty quick, so that way we can get into the next video where all the meat is going to be for how to make our game, our very first game, and how to get started in GDevelop. So I just want to introduce you to the interface before we get started, so that way it makes it easier in the following videos for you to follow along. So when you open GDevelop, you'll get greeted with a well-organized workspace, in my opinion. And I want to break that down for you into the key areas that, it'll be, that you'll be using the most frequent. So that let's begin with this white area here. We call this the scene editor um, in and uh, the scene editor comprises of a few components. Um, this but this is the area in which all of the magic happens in your game. It's the canvas for building your game's environment. And here you can add the backgrounds, the objects like characters and enemies and uh, even design the layout of each of your levels or a, maybe a continual game, depending on the style of game that you're doing. So uh, that's where all of this is. And now inside of this component, this scene editor, this white canvas using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Um, and you can also use the middle mouse button down uh, if you click it to drag and, and navigate this menu. But this black area is your uh, view port or your camera. 
And so this is the area, whenever we press the preview button, this is the area in which that you'll see uh, your game take place. So the, everything, anything that we put in here will be available there. So anytime you want to test out your game, just click the preview button. That's a great. Um, if it is already open, you can generally click the update button and whatever you changed will go into effect. Now, sometimes um, there are use cases where you need to actually close it all the way down. While we're getting started in this ter the, the tutorial series, we won't be updating our scripts very often. We'll just close it out and relaunch it to ensure functionality to make sure it's working. Um, and then one of the other things that I want to introduce you to before we go any farther um, is in, in the preview format, clicking on the drop down, we can click and view our game and a debugger menu. Now, what we're interested in once our game starts is minimizing it. And now you'll see that we have a debugger open. This is the area where um, as you build your game, it, the debugger tool is used for troubleshooting. It helps you identify and fix any errors or unexpected behavior in your game logic. And you can take a tour and, and explore this on your own. But once your game is launched, you can click refresh and we can see the different the different structure of our game. And there's nothing in here right now, but other than some basic uh, instructions from uh, the back end of GDevelop. So we can just close that out for now. If you find yourself back at the home screen menu, you just navigate back at the top, get back to our untitled scene, and we'll move over to the next part. So the next part is the objects menu. So the objects panel here on the right hand side is where all of the available objects for this scene is uh, is is available to drag and drop onto. So as you add a game object, so down here are the add a new object. We can add sprites and 3D objects, input methods or input uh, pictures. So uh, multi-touch uh, mobile features. We can add text and user interface and visual effects and tile maps and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we'll be covering all of this in the next video, but um, I just want to get you started to understand where everything is. So here on the right hand side again, this is everything that's available in this uh, layout or, or scene. So um, as you add objects by dragging and dropping them into the uh, scene, you'll, you'll then be able to access the instance, the version. The, uh, so if I grabbed multiple objects of the same type, let's say we had a player sprite and I dragged in three copies of it. Each one would be its own instance of that sprite. And if we clicked on it, the settings for that object would appear here in the left hand panel. This is where we can um, do things. Uh, so when you select an object in the scene editor or uh, the object list over here, it'll open up uh, a panel uh, or show you what, what happens here. And all of this is customizable. This is where you can fine tune things like the object's position, its size, the animation, and more or less how it interacts with other objects. So we can access all of those properties here on the left hand side. And uh, visually, I won't go into that and show you um, this time because I want to keep this video short. But we, again, and for the last time, we'll be doing all of that in the next video. So um, the, that's what you see when you get started. Now, I want to show you the other hidden parts that may not be so obvious just to make sure that you have some, uh, in your free time, you can navigate this and get familiar with it. So over here, we have the hamburger menu at the top left. And this is just how we get to the file, edit, view, window, help sections of the GDevelop program. So the settings, if you will. And then we have the project manager, which is the area of this little uh, three cubed thing, um, is where we can access our game that we've recently started. And so here we can access the properties, which is the game's name. If we wanted to change it, add a description or compile the project's uh, um, settings for exporting. Um, same thing with icons and thumbnails. Those kind of go hand in hand. And the game dashboard is a unique feature inside of GDevelop that lets us look at our statistics for our game, what builds are available online, and where they're located. The feedback section from other users, if you open your, your project up for that. Analytics, so you can see who's playing your game and all of that good demographical information. The leaderboards, so you can actually add a um, custom leaderboard for your game and we can keep track of players who've survived the longest or who's killed and you know more the most monsters and things like that and then uh or you know game scores and whatnot and then marketing and ads and this is the section once we have our game ready and launched and shared online we can we can use the ad marketing tools 
Um, and then we have global variables, which is so well, actually, so we have game settings, which is more of our big overall project settings. And then we have the the direct project settings. So what we're immediately dealing with the actual um, so this is like composition and uh, administrative tools, I would say. And then here we have the actual project tools. And so we have global variables, which are variables like text strings, number variables, booleans, yes, true and false, um, and then arrays or structures. And uh, we can create those here on a global scope, which means we can access these features no matter where we are in the game uh, here. And so we can add those, we can name them, give them a variable, and, and uh, you know, if it's a string, you can say, hello world. Um, uh, and then that would just be saved in our global features and we can access that, uh, that variable later. We have the resource manager tool, which uh, very simply put is as you create objects and things in your game, you won't have anything in here, but I had created an object to show you that even though I don't have anything available here in the objects list, because uh, I had created something and then deleted it, the resource is still available in the game. And this can bog down your game and you may need to manage your resources at some point to remove unwanted files. And you do that here in this section, clicking on it, deleting it, um, changing, you can edit the, the file location, um, or even with a right click, remove the unused assets and, uh, of any kind. And there we go, it's gone. So that's pretty cool. And then we can also see that we have our scenes. If we want to change anything in our uh, scene that's already made, we can click on the buttons and edit those various properties. Um, we can rename it if we wanted to um, and do all that there. Extensions are where we add extra functions and behaviors for our game, like health and points and um, firing bullets, adding controller support and other really cool features that have been added uh, by the GDevelop team as well as Mo uh, mostly predominantly by the uh, community at large. And so there's community made resources and approved resources and all of those are available in the extensions. And um, I, I, yeah, and so we'll, we'll be going into that again uh, in, in the following video. And then we have external layouts, uh, events and layouts, which um, those are a bit more, um, they require a bit more investing of your time to kind of manage those and, and use them. But uh, I would say that for now, we can stick to just a scene. So here we can see if we double clicked on our scene um, that we, we have it open here or just tab over to it. Now, if you did close these, um, even if you close both of them, you're in, you go back to the build menu, you are still technically in your game. You can go over here and click on that and then just double click on your scene and reopen it in case you closed anything. Now, um, now that we know what the scene editor is, we can go over to the events. Now events, uh, this is like the brain of your game. The event sheet is where you define the rules and logic behind how your game works. Using events, actions, and conditions, uh, and we'll get to those later, uh, you'll program the behavior for the object and, and make your game come to life here. And um, all of that will be covered in the following video. So uh, then we have a few other buttons which are important to GDevelop, which is up here on the right-hand side. We have a groups panel, and this is the object groups panel, property panel, and this is where we can create a, a group and add objects to that group, so like a parent structure. So we can add, let's say, we make a group and call it enemies, and then we can add all the objects that we make in our game in that list, and then in our programming area, the event sheet, we can say for all of the, um, the various enemies that there are, do this one thing or do this for each of them, um, which is pretty cool. And so we can close that down. And then we have the instance panel. Like I said before, if you create objects and drag them in here, each one that you do create, each instance will be added down here. And we can see, uh, we'll be able to view them by name. We can sort them by what their X and Y positions. We can check their angles, what layer they're visible on and the Z order or the depth on each layer that they're on. And so that'll make more sense later on. We have the open panel pro layer properties, and this is where we get the uh, the section for so our layers panel is where we get uh, all the information that we need for uh, or so in our layers property panel. This is the area in which um, we can add more uh, layers and background information. We can lock them to make sure that we don't accidentally um, click on anything or maneuver anything on that layer, or we can turn off visibility and even add game effects. We can even add game effects such as lighting or outlines and fog and all sorts of good stuff. So 
Uh, that's what that area is for. You can close that down. And then we have one, arguably one of my, uh, I think the one of the most critical parts of developing GDevelop, and that's the grid. Making sure that your game snaps to grid um, and uh, is accessible that way. And that way, when you drag items onto here, they, um, they stay within the grid format, which is very handy. And also, we can change our grid options. So it starts at a 32 by 32, but we can change it to anything we want and even change it to isometric. There isn't uh, really um, a, a whole lot of limitation there. There's a, there's a lot of uh, flexibility in creating our grids and our mask layers, um, or um, sorry, our mask grids. Um, so pretty cool. Um, there's also the, the undo and uh, redo button, the various zoom features or fit the content into screen. We can uh, get it back to its initial position. Um, I'm gonna disable the grid so we can see a little bit more clearly. And then we have the, the uh, scene property panel. So we can name this particular scene. We can change the background color or add scene variables, much like global variables, but only available here in the game scene. So that's a very quick crash course on how to navigate the user interface. I really want to encourage you to go ahead and take the time to navigate through this on your own. GDevelop is designed to be user-friendly, so experiment and get comfortable with, with how to, imp to do your own input here, uh, interact with it, and uh, it'll make it easier for you to follow along in the following videos. So hopefully this got you squared away on where to get started uh, and how to navigate the interface. And in the next following video, we'll be adding the objects and behaviors and going through the real meat of how to get started making your game. So thanks for joining us for part two. If you have any questions about GDevelop's interface, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And be sure to like and subscribe for more awesome GDevelop tutorials. Remember, happy game making, and I'll see you in the next video.